everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to the first drive of the 458 Spider. So today we're taking the car on a route very similar to Sam's route from Seen Through Glass. Sam did a video on on a Lotus and he took it around Hackpen Hill in the Wiltshire in the Wiltshire area and that is just actually around the corner from where we are and we always thought if I got a supercar then we'll do a, we'll we'll take the car out on a similar route and now we've picked up the 458 Spider. Uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to do the first drive on that route. So we're actually at the far end. We're in between Hackpen Hill now and Marlborough. So let's get the 458 out on that first drive and I'll give you my first impressions. too much with the different um, sports modes it's in sport mode at the moment race mode it opens up to the exhaust valve a lot quicker and um, I think it's a bit more direct but it's hard to tell at the moment one annoying thing at the moment is if you switch it out of auto it automatically puts auto back on again when you when you um, start the car back up again the next time it's uh, just a slight annoyance but it'd be nice if it stayed where you last set it. I don't know if that's possible or not. I have to play around with it a bit, but I don't think you can. I think once it's um, it loses that setting, it doesn't latch it when you when you turn the engine off. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, I mean the performance is exhilarating. Let's uh, open it up a little bit on this straight road. Thing, but this time in race mode so I've just switched it into, into race mode let's see what it's like now I'll drop it back a few gears so in race mode the gear changes a lot more aggressive and nowhere near as smooth as it is in sport mode it really throws you back in the seat when you're changing gear no. seats are very very comfortable indeed 
I've already spoken about the controls on the steering wheel. If you want to hear more and see more about my thoughts on the controls, then please check my my uh, review on the steering wheel. But needless to say, the controls are very close to hand, but a lot of them are overly complex, especially the windscreen wiper. And of course, as has been stated before by many other YouTubers, the indicators on the steering wheel aren't necessarily a good design. A lot of the functionality being embedded on the steering wheel is great for F1 racing, but not necessarily good for practicing the actual real world when you're driving a car. You get used to the indicators, but um, it still doesn't come natural, especially if you're driving other cars, which of course I do. I only drive this on nice weather very frequently, so you have to relearn the, the different um, access to the controls. The heater controls are a right pain in the arse, haven't quite sussed them out yet, and the manual for the heater controls isn't very good. It just literally says this button switches this on, switches that on. It doesn't give you appreciation of any context of what those actually do with respect to the other buttons. Uh, good leg room and good movement around my feet, good access in the footwell for my feet. Um, plenty of room to move the seat back a little bit further if I wanted to. And of course, you no longer have that fixed Italian uh, driving mode where you can't move the steering wheel. The steering wheel is electronically moved um, up, up, down, was and fore and aft. So it's pretty cool from that respect. So really, it's a, it's a nice place to be in the cabin of uh, a 458. It's, it's a very nice place to be, uh, especially on a day like today when you've got the, the sun's out. Pretty much one of the best days we've had so far for this year. We're still in late spring. We haven't really hit summer properly yet. And it's, uh, it's beautiful weather. It's, it's a great place to be. And obviously one of the key reasons why I bought a 458 Spider. The comfort of the car is, um, is very good. Driving around country lanes at the moment, just switched into bumpy road mode, which is fantastic because we're on old country lanes. And it's just great, the, the flexibility that that, limb, that single button affords you to be able to switch it into, into bumpy road mode. It really takes off the, the strain and really, really adds a lot more support. And doesn't really um, negate from the actual directness of the, of the steering. Obviously, you know, as you felt there with the bumps, you, you can't overcome everything with, uh, with bumpy road mode. Sam from Seafruit Glass did on one of his videos when he took the, the Lotus out. So as I said before, the, the steering is very direct, the car feels very agile, it always feels like it really wants to go. I see what it's like threading the car around these corners at Hackpen Hill. Let's try this hill. you put the roof up this is very solid don't get me wrong the car's very solid with the roof down it's it's um, there's there's not much scuttle shake um, this is very uneven roads we're on as well so it's probably the worst case scenario but we've put the roof up now and uh, definitely it feels firmer there's no doubt about it it feels it, you can tell that there is some torsional stiffness lost with the actual roof down it, uh, it feels more like a saloon car with the roof up and you definitely gain a little bit more rigidity. Uh, it has to be said as well, the, 
the bumpy road mode, which always sounds comical to me, but, but the bumpy road mode um, that Ferrari provide is astonishingly good. It's incredibly good. It makes a lot of difference when you press it. So we're just back with the roof off now and just in another comparison of whether, um, you know, if the chassis loses any of its rigidity with the roof down. And it's, it's very marginal, to be honest. It's very, very marginal. Maybe a slight difference with the roof up and down with the chassis rigidity, but it's, it's very slight. It's very subtle, which is great, which means, you know, it's, it's very well designed, very strong chassis, as you'd expect from Ferrari. Although there's always going to be a compromise with a spider when you chop the roof off a car, there's always a compromise. It's never going to be as rigid as a, a non drop head chassis design. But it's pretty good. In fact, it's very good. So I'm just getting used to driving the car now. Um, second drive, so it's not surprising, but it takes a bit of getting used to. But it's, the car is awesome. Just listen to this tunnel coming up. So that's the end of the first try video guys. You'll notice I probably changed my attire a few times, but well, that's because the weather's changed. We wanted to make sure we got the best shots possible for the first drive video. So excuse me if you see me and if you notice that I'm in quite a few different different outfits throughout the, throughout the drive. That's how it goes. That's YouTubing for you. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please think, please think about subscribing. We've got around 92% of our viewers that aren't subscribed at the moment. It'd be great if we can convert some of those non-subscribers to subscribe viewers. Please keep vigilant for future videos to come. You should notice that there's a new intro in this video and in the previous video where it was initialized in the Ferrari V8 mid-engine history. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video. One of the uh, quirks for sure is that you can't hear the indicators on this. So I'm commonly leaving the indicators on accidentally and then noticing they're on whenever, I, when either somebody flashes me or shows me that I've got them on by repeating Incoming the Incoming call. Oh. Press phone button to answer. I've got my son calling me. Some clown.